Hello, hello, and welcome, my Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Welcome to your Twin Flame contract read for August and September uh, 2020. I am your reader, Mark Angela Lyons, Mal for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions and Leo Rising. Uh, this will be the first of my signs that we'll be looking at Twin Flame contracts for. Uh, so looking forward to doing this uh, with you all, particularly my uh, subscribers, my followers, whatever you want to call my malcontents. Oh my god. Uh, welcome back. Let's see what we got for our, us Leo uh, signs today. And thank you so much for your love and support along the way, giving my creativity a voice. Leo, right? Fifth house. Creativity, good fortune, pleasure, artistry, creativity. So... Let my Leo rising do its thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you are new to my channel, please do consider subscribing, liking the video, commenting, notification bell, you know, all the standard stuff for readers to help me get my work out there. Greatly appreciated. Other than that, uh, let's get down to business. We are doing a twin flame contract read. We'll be doing Divine Feminine. Divine Masculine has nothing to do with bodily gender. It's just a way of uh, doing the dynamics. You're going to have to kind of figure out who you are one side or the other. We'll be using Caroline Mace archetype cards for this. There will be an extended uh, reading on Vimeo. I've been doing that this time around because the guides are like, no, these will be the most important twin flame contract patterns available to the 12 signs. And if they can heal this, uh, learn to heal, you know, what are twin flame contracts? Uh, pre-incarnational agreements that two souls agree to in order to learn how to heal themselves in a contract in a relationship, right? How to love themselves, create boundaries, all that kind of stuff. So it's trickier than people think. And of course, you have more than one. And of course, there's uh, they're not all romantic sexual. But it's odd. It seems like what in the extended reads, that's when we get the other card. Just like, oh, 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 oh. So if you really feel called and drawn, you might want to check out their five bucks each I'm doing on Vimeo. Same price for all of them. And having a field day with it. So anyway, um, uh, all I need you to do, right, is focus on your breath. Try and stay in the present moment, right? Breathe, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Check your other signs because it might be a different way of looking at the same contract or a completely different twin flame contract because as we heal, we all heal, right? So our relationships are a part of the healing of the third and fourth dimension, elevating into the fifth, blah, 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 unconditional love, hero's journey. <laughs> what are you going to do? Enlightenment. Here we go. So look at a contract is what we're going to do. So take a few deep breaths. Uh, all the decks that I read are in the description box at the bottom. We got two new ones that we're doing here. I think you'll dig it. And then we'll do um, the extended read over on Vimeo. Take a nice deep breath. Oh, a lot of exposition just to get to this point. I know, but it's necessary. <laughs> And we're on, please, my collective pantheons of angels, goddesses, gods, masters, uh, masters of, tw of uh, twin flame contracts and the higher selves of all involved, please. I need two cards, one for the divine feminine, one for the divine masculine in this Leo collective sun, moon, rising Venus sign twin flame contract, timeless whenever they're supposed to see it, obviously, but as a nice two foundational cards, who is the divine feminine and who is the divine masculine, at least for August, September uh, 2020, there's our feminine, here is our masculine, and I love drawing those with eyes closed, so it's just like, go ahead, you put them in my hands. So remember, these can be triggery. Archetypes uh, are light and shadow. They're the balance of lead and gold. This is what you are learning to heal within yourself. So there's also twinning, right? So you might identify with both sides, maybe even seeing these as manifestations of uh, both your inner uh, feminine as well as inner masculine energy. Uh, well, We've got the Rebel and the Companion, though. I have to say, it doesn't mean the two of you couldn't get up to some antics together. I can feel uh, that for sure. The Divine Feminine Rebel is just loving that. Oh, I, can, I can resonate with that. that I can definitely resonate with that as a Divine Feminine. Um, but I also have the companion archetype here for the Divine Masculine. So even if I, whether I'm in this reading or not as a Leo rising, I, 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 I find these both very interesting, an interesting alchemical blend. Uh, the shadow attribute of the Divine Feminine Rebel uh, rejects legitimate authority out of anger, rebels uh, out of peer pressure or fashion. It's like I said, when I, when I was your age... <laughs> 
<laughs> punk meant you were poor, right? and you dyed your hair just to prove what a freak you are not to be in fashion, right? But, you know, that's, I, I'm going to be 52 on September 6th, so there you have it. <laughs> I know I don't look good. Uh, the light attribute um, challenges authority to affect social change, rejects uh, spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs. So I get that, right? Like, that's very big on the planet right now, the, the rebel, the revolutionary. But to really, to keep it in uh, that that um, it's it's so interesting social justice which I consider to be very second wave but to have it with a divine feminine so someone who's very empathic uh, my sense of this is compassionate but really um, has to keep an eye on uh, the well like drive on the correct side of the road the left side the right side depending on where you are obviously uh, but you know just be careful with legitimate forms of authority though like particularly your own um, your own honor code and boundaries when you know you're doing something and your gut is saying don't do it, right? That That's part of the rebel uh, as well. It's a tricky archetype in this time, but absolutely being purified in the flames of alchemy. And the divine feminine, the shadow attribute, betrayal by misusing confidences. Um loss of personal identity, and that's why I've struggled with companions in my life. I have it uh, in the healing family. This is the action family. This is the healing family of archetype. So for the divine masculine there to really like trust people and confidence and to have that betrayed over and over and over again is part of how you heal the um, acceptance and, and honor that is within you as well and cultivate that in relationships through what? The light attribute, loyalty, uh, tenacity, and unselfishness. It's a very, very tricky alchemy here because this one's like, whatever it takes, I want to be loyal, whatever. And this is like, well, but right, if they're in their shadow, oof. Now remember, this is not about bodily gender at all. Like, it's not even about sexual preference. It's going to be any combo of any of that but if you think there was this story of a rebel and a companion, right? It's, it's uh, like, I almost want to say, like, um, not so much Batman and Robin, but you sort of get the idea, although Batman was a vigilante, sort of a rebel. I mean, can a billionaire be a rebel? I don't know. He's cute enough, though. Mm. I wonder. Sorry. I'm a DC kid. Shall we keep going? Uh, you may not know who you are yet, but that's okay. We're going to clarify quite a bit. Uh, moving next to the Doreen Virtue Healing Angels, uh, Healing with the Angels Oracle. What is the angel that is walking with you individually? You can't really help each other heal. That's the realm of the soulmate. And by the way, there's some really good links in the description box uh, to, to kind of give this new definition, new-ish definition of what twin flames and soulmates are. Um, but you're learning how to heal yourselves, being the mate of your own soul, so that you can be a better soulmate. I mean, how do I bring in my soulmate relationship? Well, be a better soulmate to yourself. I mean, you learn to love yourself, blah, 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 but that's what it is. It's annoying, but it's, it's what it is. So, uh, nice deep breath. There you are. My angels, please, one card in clarity uh, for both of them. Let's do one at a time, face down. Who is the angel that walks with this? Uh, rebel archetype. Ooh, who is the angel that walks with this rebel archetype? And who uh, with this companion, this divine feminine rebel and this divine masculine companion in this Leo collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign? Well, she's got the angel of support. I'm going to say she just because it's divine feminine. Um, the support of spirit here. So if this is someone who really um, it is in a process of revolution. <laughs> evolution within themselves might be having their own interior revolution, right? But really finding the way as they go. In a twin flame contract, we are really forced sometimes to look into and have the courage and bravery uh, to find how supported we are by going out on a limb, particularly in terms of our own self-healing and, and self-growth, and to perhaps rebel away from, uh, right, it says here, reject spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs, because it feels like this type of support is of those inner needs from the divine, from guides and masters, and perhaps even spiritual community. I mean, this is such a classic image now. This has been on mugs and t-shirts just, you know, all over the place. Um, it's just such a beautiful uh, vibe there, though. So let's keep going, because we get the rebel has spiritual support there. 
the companion divine guidance. So that's what I feel like. It's like this this twin flame here. There's something about a rebel and a companion that's a little classic, I guess you want to say. Like I don't want to. I mean, like I guess you could say Sid and Nancy too. But which was the rebel? Which was the companion on that one? Right? They seem pretty well matched. Uh, but you you kind of get what I'm saying. Uh, go down like oh the the Joker and and Harley except you know the Divine Femme so let's keep going it's very interesting this card of of Divine Guidance it's like if the companion can really be loyal to that within themselves right and understand that they are are walking with an angel that will help them heal by not losing their identity in this twin flame relationship, but rather to be loyal and perhaps to be to be tenacious and selfless, but for a higher context, right? Not just th th for them alone. It'd be tricky, tricky, sticky. Well, and let's clarify that. We are going to get five cards from the Daughters of the Moon Tarot. And we are going to get five cards from the Mythic Tarot for the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine, respectively, Fire, Earth, Air, Water, Spirit, so that if you're not really sure which one you are, if there's a, quite a bit of twinning going on, it is only two cards down. The Rebel Archetype with the Angel of Support, the Companion with the Angel of Divine Guidance, I don't, and considering that the Companion with Divine Guidance is the Divine Masculine on this one, I would really see these more reversed, but that's how you have it with Twin Flames too. So let's ask the goddesses for this Divine Feminine Rebel. Ah, oh, my feet are like on relevant under the table. The energy is really high for this one, my Leos, please. My goddesses, uh, five cards one at a time, I'll call them out for this Divine Feminine Rebel archetype, walking with the Angel of Support in this uh, Leo Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign, Twin Flame Contract, August, September 2020, or Timeless. What does she want? Her element of fire. Please leave the card. That's fine. Uh, what is her element of fire uh, that feeds uh, the element of Earth, that feeds the element of fire? What she has. What is her element of air? What is she thinking about this? What is she feeling about this, her element of water? And most importantly, what is the point of view or the voice of the soul that agreed to this contract in the first place in this life? <laughs> Good. We've got her. Let's just get him on the table so that we know uh, we have them all. And then I can flip them over fire, fire, air, air, you know, in order that way. It's just more fun, I think, but I would. Okay, here we go. Those were the goddesses, the divine yen. Let's do the gods, the divine yang. Breathe. Apollo in particular, please. Your light, your clarity, my gods. For this divine masculine companion archetype, walking with the angel of divine guidance, and yes, can very much be a guiding force to this uh, rebel. That's what it feels like a little, little classic here. It may be even like a Luke Obi-Wan deal here a little bit. So please, the hero's journey and all. Fire, earth, air, water, spirit. I'll call them out one at a time, please, my gods, for your guidance, your clarity, your grace for this Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. What is the element of fire? What do they really want in this contract to this companion? What's their earth, what they have? to help them get what they want. What is uh, their element of air? What are they thinking about it? What you thinking about it? Huh? You big companion, you. What's uh, What are they feeling? What's their element of water here? Because I'm getting, I, I'm getting there's, there's quite a bit of love going on here. Remember, just because it's twin flame doesn't mean it's not love. It's just they can't give you by contract the love that you want. You have to give it to yourself. So most importantly, the card of spirit. What is the point of view of the soul who, ingre uh, who agreed to this contract? <laughs> so if you're going to be mad at anybody, go talk to your soul. <laughs> Take it up with upstairs, right? I say that to people. You don't like the way, the way I'm doing it. Go talk to my bosses. You know, uh, complain upstairs. I'm just doing what they tell me. Ready? Element of fire element of fire. The Divine Feminine has the moon, and the Divine Masculine has the Wheel of Fortune. Now, to start off with both of what you want, right? Mm, similar cards, in a sense, of the mystery of the destiny and the turning of fate into destiny. What do the fates uh, have in store for us 
a couple of rows down, so to speak, and uh, and the moon. That really what the the rebel here wants is to find and feel their way through what's going on. It might be a little cloudy, right? I don't want to say rebel without a cause or rebel without a clue, but a rebel without clarity, that the archetype is there. And perhaps in terms of what they want is they really want it to be revealed to them on a gut soul level here, what's right for them, the right way to go. Um, because this kind of this country, I know everybody from on YouTube forget it. it's not just about the United States, but a huge thing about the freedom, right? The rebel is just a, a part of, right? Where the uh, it's such a complex archetype right now, right? Uh, and, and really is so very like look up if you really relate to the rebel and the revolutionary, really look into what's called the second wave of ascension. So that really more the divine masculine. So to see this in the divine feminine is an interesting uh, counterpoint. So things might be a little foggy, a little occluded, a little hidden, a little beneath the surface right now, uh, which is not always a Leo's territory. But we're not saying this is the Leo for every person watching this. Well. Melchior pops up to say hi. Hey, buddy, lay down, lay down. Mama's working. Uh, we've got really wants the turn of the wheel, right? This divine masculine companion is like, it kind of feels like, let's get on with this. That there is something destined. They want their destined peace, their lesson, their fate, uh, the destiny extracted from fate by taking the journey. Go on, sweetheart. Go lay down, lay down. What do they have to help them get that? All right, this is where it gets tricky. Uh, the four flames in this deck is the card of conflict. So literally the conflict in what's going on between the two of them is going to help uh, her, I'll just say her, this rebel kind of get the clarity, particularly rebels once they have, I hate to say a clear enemy, but someone uh, in opposition, something to oppose in that way. Uh, that there is uh, definitely some impetus, some some extra fire, some fuel thrown on the fire to help them burn off some of that cloudiness there. Um, I mean, if both of these are on the same side of the issue, that could be true as well. But what we've got going on here, what helps this Divine Masculine Companion really, I would say, even see this in terms of the longer haul, the longer picture, the larger contract of the Wheel of the Year here, seen as the Wheel of Fortune, that, yeah, things are moving, things are moving forward, but to see them more from an intellectual place. This is the Aquarian card. Be friendly. Be kind, keep your P's and Q's and manners, but be truthful. See what's there. See what's actually there. Um, I also get with this feeling, it's like there's such a matter of time. Like this could very easily be a familial relationship. Like right away, there's nothing here screaming romantic sexual. Uh, as much as it could be someone who is connected to somebody who is <laughs> being very, very rebellious and might just be part of who they are. Remember, reason, season, or lifetime with, with archetypes. You can go through a phase for a season, and sometimes for a reason we will rebel. Um, this feels a bit more lifelong here kind of thriving on energy of conflict to you right now, but out of, but you know, the, the four of flames conflict is one foot on the gas, one foot on the brake. It's part of the decision-making process and needs to be felt and moved through. Um, it's just not pretty, right? Particularly if this is about do I stay or do I go in a time where twin flame contracts are just alchemizing people's stuff at like the highest heat that they can stand, even if they can't. So what is the element of air? What are they thinking here? Well, I'm going to say with the Aries card, our first court card here. Oh, no, we've got a court card here, too. We've got the Aquarius card. Mm, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. What I just got, just even touching this card here, is to really pull back, if you are the divine masculine companion here, to pull back, to give space. There's a lot of heat going on here. Uh, this could be the Leo, like if you're the cross watcher, and even if you're the, the rebel Leo here, to just be like, okay, I do need to kind of take care of my own needs right now. I do need to do that Leo card. Yes, this could certainly be for the divine uh, masculine, someone who's an Aquarian in their life, who's some 
who helps give them perspective and see things from a larger picture. But still, it's recommended. Aquarians don't just pull back, they pull up so that they can see the larger picture. That's why they can remain friendly, right? So, so there is a way through this. I do feel like there is love here, that there is a soul contract here, but there's a lot of tumultuous, and that's what Twin Flames are. Go watch the videos, the, the links in the description box. They're, they're, can, they're, twin Flames can be torturous, but they are transformative. They are turbulent. But like being in a rock tumbler, right? They polish you. They're, and, and so... If we look at this as yes, for the Divine Feminine, there may be some contemplation of interaction with some Aries energy or new beginnings, but ultimately needing to think for oneself and, and to really think uh, of oneself in terms of who they want to be. I mean, the thing about rebellion is in this time, it's like, it's time for it, right? He's planet's going retrograde and just, ugh, ay, 2020, we'll never forget it. I mean, really, it's nuts. But for there to be legitimate, like, challenging authority, even within their own selves, challenging their own interior uh, honor code, their own system of who they are and who they want to be, it's a big deal. It I just feels, it feels really, really, really large, where this companion here, well, if what they're thinking is kind of having to think for themselves, think of themselves, I'm straying away from the word selfish because self-care and self-healing is part of selfish, right? So we need to neutralize that word a little bit more, in my opinion. But the feeling of thinking that they're trapped, right? Really, really thinking that they're trapped are... are divine masculine companion here trying to think their way through it and there is no it's like this could easily be parent child either side could be parent child i mean that's the thing about twin flames once you take it out of purely the romantic sexual you go oh my god my whole life has been twin flames <laughs> all of them you have your soulmates right your friends that certain family member here or there here or there right where you help each other heal it's symbiotic it's satisfying it's all the it's all the s words right right soothing and satisfying um this is this is tricky this is really tricky i could feel uh, the vibe on this, and that's why I can see what they want. It's like, can we just get on with it? <laughs> can, we just, can we just turn the wheel already? And perhaps having to be a little cold about it is their way through, or at least seeing it logically, right? Doing the math. Uh, this is really, really tough. I get it for the divine masculine here because I'm going to say, and you may love that I'm saying this if you're the Leo, you're a handful right now. You just are, but you have all the support you need. Don't forget that. Like, it's not that this person doesn't support you, it's just they don't know what to do. And that's okay. There's a loyalty and a tenacity there, but they may not be able to go with you where you are where you want them to go. Uh, here we've got the volcano and the Six of Pentacles. Element of water, you're a little different too. Uh, for uh, the Divine Feminine Rebel here, just ready to explode, if not exploding already. So literally going from the Four of Flames in the Element of Earth to the Five of Flames, Pele, the volcano. Now I will say this, having been being Leo rising, Mars conjunct, I can get angry. But I roar and then it's over with. It's like a really good burp. So that's the thing about taking space. Like, really, seriously, you have the support you need spiritually. Look, cast circle. Call in, right? right? <laughs> Go into the bathroom, whatever you need to do to take that space because there is an emotional guidance thing that you want from this to really, really know the truth of who you are in terms of this rebellion. What is legitimate authority? Does your soul have legitimate authority in this, right? What does your soul say about that? And that's the last card down. Where here, for the Divine Masculine, what they're feeling, interestingly enough, is, is this thing of the Six of Pentacles, right? That there's a certain temporary success achieved in terms of balance emotionally here because of at least some kind of physical give and take. And I think that really feels like, you know what, you take your space, I'll take mine, we're going to be fair and equitable about this in terms of physicality is at least what they're feeling now. If you're all living in the same domain, that's tricky. Uh, you do the best you can on that, obviously, uh, if you are literally up in each other's faces. Uh, but my sense is, even if that's the case, the, the 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 rebel here really needs to address what is legitimate authority, what is fair, what is balanced, because I feel like the companion wants to be fair and balanced, like is not looking to be 
ridiculously tyrannical wants that six of pentacles balance understanding that sometimes in relationships it's not always three and three right it's like two and four but then you hope that it goes back to three and three and then two you know that way like that it really balances it. don't ask me to do math but you get what i'm saying right but that at the end of the day you want two fires burning brightly individually that their combined light lights the world you know whatever Sorry, I've been doing this too long, but that's that's the idea, right? Are you gonna come together? Are you gonna be twin flames? Are you gonna um, be soulmates? Well, let's see. Let's ask the soul what's going on here. Sorry, that light just popped on, and it blinds me. It blinds me. It hurts my eyes. So I confront it with the power of Matt Khan, and it clicks right off because it's brighter than the light. Matt Khan is brighter than the light. Kind of is. Must be all them sweater vests and kale. God bless his soul. I think he's adorable. Oh, well, the voice of the soul, shall we? Let's just dive in. We've got the hangman for the divine feminine. So the soul is saying, will you just chill? Don't crack up. Bend your brain. See both sides. Throw off your mental chains. Woo, woo, woo. Sorry, the words of St. Howard of the Jones, right? It's like hanged man. You need to chill your will, kiddo. <laughs> Warrior rebel, I feel you in there. I feel that, that rebellion. And really, the Aries is on your mind. So even if this isn't just selfishness, it's that Mars energy of wanting to lose your and take to the streets. And I get it, it's your time to do that. And you have the support of other oh, guys, masters, teachers, gods, goddesses, angels, totally. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Your multi-dimensional staff team is there. This person is uh, eight, uh, really, if I was gonna say, eight of swords in the mind here. Worried, freaking sick about you. Yet is walking with the angel. So that's the thing. You can't change each other, but you could certainly try and understand each other, particularly if this is parent-child. Just say, I get it. I'm freak. I'm I'm breaking through things, and also if you, if this is you on this side, right? If the Five of Cups, that there <laughs> sounds horrible to say, but if this is mother child this way, or parent child, sorry, I don't have to gender it. Um, but with companion and the rebel, the Five of Cups to just understand that yes, there is heartbreak here. Yes, there is, but this is part of love. That things are being revealed. That that oh, it's like the one of the mantras from this healing mantra deck. My losses prove how deeply I loved. Processing grief. I don't think that there's any like horrible portend here uh, or something like that. I mean, we are going to do past, present, future. Uh, three in the extended read that you past present future with uh, two different decks. Uh, I cross deck. I use the the uh, <laughs> the mythic tarot for the divine feminine and the daughters of the moon for the divine masculine, and then I use uh, another deck. So you're getting at least twelve cards. But then I bop around and see what else needs to be shown. And that five of cups is one I would want to go into a little bit deeper. But from the point of view of the soul, it's like okay, this is a five of cups. It's not all the way to the ten, but there is going to be tears here. There is going to be emotional upset. I mean. The thing, the tragedy of this picture here is that Psyche didn't really trust that her husband, Eros, was Eros because they wasn't allowed to look him in the face. Which, arranged, wasn't even an arranged marriage. It's just like a weird meth. Read the meth, right? And so she takes the the uh, 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 candle, like a lamp, an oil lamp, just to see while he's sleeping. Look how beautiful it is. He's gorgeous. I mean, my God, he's a god. He's just gorgeous. And a little drop of oil hits his uh, leg and burns him. He wakes up and he flees away. How could you? You promised what to do. So emotional upset, but a truth is learned. But a truth is learned. Something is seen. So it, yes, from the soul's point of view, the truth may be heartbreaking. Uh, maybe not what you expected or maybe exactly what you wanted, but then there's emotional upset here one way or another. And so the soul really speaks here. Let's uh, let's keep going. We've got our two characters here. Uh, party number one, party number two. Now we're going to do the center aisle. And this is where we new use our new ones. I love these. The Kuan Yin Oracle. I did an unboxing of them. If you want to go see card by card what they're like. Otherwise, I'm learning them. And the book is really good. It is, um, it is, it is very, um, um, uh, intricate. It is very intricate. It's very well written. Verbose, I think. Now that sounds almost like a negative. I don't even want to say that. It's not. Um, 
uh, in depth. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have a strong connection with both Kuan Yin and Archangel Michael, which is the next new oracle, the Blue Angel. Um, I'm going to ask them to pull the cards and then I'm going to read what's in the book and then I will read in terms of what's on the table. You get me? So let's ask uh, Kuan Yin now. All I have to do to connect with her such a specific image, but I, I recommend it if you ever watched I Dream of Jeannie. Remember the pink smoke? <laughs> oh, Kuan Yin. Oh, Kuan Yin. Please, please. Great Bodhisattva, great goddess, great ascended master, because you transcend, apparently, all sorts of dimensional uh, identities. Please, one card in clarity for this Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign twin flame contract. Uh, for August, September 2020, or timeless involving this rebel archetype with this companion archetype, please. What face, what name, what veil do we get? Here, the yellow tiger mother meow. Oh, I'm so psyched. There's the Leo energy I was hoping for. I didn't know it was going to come with that card. Woo! Here, the yellow tiger mother. Okay. <laughs> Digging that. You know, nothing bad can come from that. That sounds lovely. Yes, I want to hear the yellow tiger mother of Kuan Yin. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read you the first little thumbnail sketchy thing and then the prayer at the end because there's a lot in between. Uh, number 13. Uh, sometimes we must be strong and hold true whilst all around us seems to be shifting and changing. I can see that for both sides. That's what the center lane is. This is for the contract itself for both of you. The yellow tiger mother, Kuan Yin, in her guardian role, is roaring her divine sound within you. She asks you to hear her, to remember that you are a powerful being of light, and even while you are in flow with universal forces, your strong roots help you be at peace with your truth, standing your ground while your light shines through. All right, so not an aggressive Leo kind of dealio, to stand your ground and to roar as needed, right? So can we feel that for the rebel? Absolutely. So I don't feel like any good's gonna come out of the divine feminine rebel here, like, compromising her values however looking at what's legitimate authority and what isn't that that's a changing balance right now right because what was once may not always still be right the changing times that we are in but the same for uh, uh the the divine masculine companion here perhaps really needing to see things from a place of what is mine and what is not mine here uh, for their own mental sanity and to follow their own guidance and grace. Okay, so here is the prayer uh, for that one. The prayer of the yellow tiger mother. Kuan Yin, beloved tiger mother, I need courage and strength now to be true to myself and allow my own light to take root and grow. Nurture me with your strength of spirit so that I might realize that I have your strength within me too. It is my strength my courageous heart. Help me, beloved, now to realize my courage and have peace in my heart. I feel the roar of your courage and strength within me, and I realize that this is my own courage, too. Thank you for helping me realize this, beloved Tigress. O Mani Padme Hum. Praise be the jewel in the lotus. See, these two not getting along. <laughs> I really can see they're being conflict, but really, I, my heart goes out to this one because you're such a ball of fire, divine rebel here, and to stand your ground, but also to get that they love you, but that you're, you're just not never going to be the kind of safety zone that this companion is, particularly if they uh, used to, if there was an identification there, right? Loss of identity at some point while well, you're changing. So it's tricky. It's tricky, tricky, tricky. It could very easily be a family thing as well. 
well as a romantic thing is, you know, tricky sticky, but not necessarily icky wicky, right? This, this can be worked out, right? That's the point, right? This is the point of a twin flame reading. Doesn't mean you cut all your twin flames out of your life. They'll just send more. No, you learn what you're supposed to learn from it, right? Learn your end. Heal your end of the, of the contract unwire the buttons so that they're not there to be pushed anymore. And that is so much easier said than done. So let's ask Archangel Michael, the Archangel of Truth and Divine Will with the Blue Angel Oracle. Uh, same company that does the Kuan Yin Oracle as well as the Whispers of Love. I would love to do an Oracle deck with them. And I have plenty of ideas, please. Join the Circle Productions if we ever actually had a physical, tangible book or card publishing aspect to what we were doing. We would take over the world. It's a lot of work. Breathe. Said the Leo Rising Mars conjunct. Let's ask Archangel Michael. Now remember I said very easy to connect to Kuan Yin. Same thing. I have just as long of a relationship with Archangel Michael, but for me it's the blue smoke of Jeannie's sister. Jeannie! I know it's a little confusing, but all Jeannies are named Jeannie, at least in that uh, part of the multiverse. Coco Beach. Breathe. Ah, give me some of that blue smoke, Archangel Michael. Hi. Oh, Archangel Michael. Hello, hello, hello. Please, I need one card in clarity for this uh, Leo. I know you like your Leos. Your Leo collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signed in these this twin flame contract, August, September 2020 or timeless. Please, we've got the Divine Rebel divine feminine here uh, uh we've got a divine masculine companion here kwan yin's talking about here the yellow tiger mother please archangel michael what is your point of view what is your guidance and grace for these two Woo! very angelina jolie uh blue earth angel higher vibration Blue Earth Angel, can you hear me? Blue Earth Angel. Don't you just wait for her legs to just go thwonk, like right out the side? She's fabulous. Is that a wrap dress? Almost a wrap dress. It's got some interesting ruching patterns. It's not criticize angelic fashion, shall we? I mean, after all, they do have access to both heaven and hell fire. Uh, higher vibration, the blue earth angel. She's fabulous. I hope that's the card of fabulousness. Uh, what number is it though? Oh my God, the numbers on these are ridiculously small and hidden. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say 10. Oh, to forego the magnifying glass for just one more day. Uh, Blue Earth Angel, and there she is. Yeah, look at her. She's like, wow. She's like, mortal, <laughs> incarnate soul, you better work. I love her. All right, higher vibration, card number 10. Uh, you are expanding your awareness and evolving to a higher vibration. I'm down with that. This great vibratory shift is part of humanity's natural evolution. I will agree. By the way, the landscapers are here. We're just going to keep going. Uh, time seems to be going faster and faster. The days and years fly by, considering what we're going through. I find that paradoxically true. Uh, this is why you feel overly sensitive and emotional at times, and why there is so much fear and confusion in our world. Okay, I'm down with that. Looking back at our history, we see that great change usually occurs in times of conflict and upheaval. Uh, perhaps these conditions are necessary in order for major changes to occur. When was this published? I, I, it's from the Blue Angel Publishing. Like the name of the, so it's probably one of their first things out. So. Mm. Uh, the beautiful angel on this card is just working it. Work those wings. Work those wings. Uh, sorry. I just appreciate nice design. Uh, the beautiful angel on this card is here to assure you that all is well and unfolding as it should. Because she has put her pumped foot down. Uh, you are safe and humanity is on the right track. Really? Humanity is on the right track, even though at times it might seem not so. <laughs> just, in, just a teeny tiny, just a smidge. Uh, some outdated structures in our global fabric may need to fall along with some outdated views and uh, mindsets. 
I'd say. Uh, but this is a necessary part of our evolution. A new era will soon be born. Out of higher awareness and great love, you are a part of this new world. I, but, with the rebel? With the, I mean, really? Part of it. Part of it. That's why uh, if you're the companion here, you can't. They're not. They're not going to. They're not going to not participate in that if that's what they came in to do. But wait, there's a there's a thing. I am a luminous eternal essence. I am a sky full of endless love. I am forever with you, for we are one. Blue earth angel, higher vibration. You know, it, it seems like a bit of a wild card, or in a way I could see, you know, if I were a Virgo, if I am going, well, that's a little vague. But it's also a little specific to where we are on planet Earth right now. Almost to say, like Archangel Michael is saying, uh, what you're going through right now is something a bit more specific for everyone, right? As personal as it is, there is this larger global transformation going on, which I'm not allowed to say what it is, on YouTube, and that's fine. I'm a reader. <laughs> Get that news elsewhere. Like any channel on TV, right? Pretty much. Except maybe Disney or Cartoon Network. I can think of a few. <laughs> uh, anyway, um... But I get it. It's like a companion and a, and a rebel. It has to both has to stand their ground and both has to get that there is a higher thing going on here. But what? Everybody's going to be fine. Everybody's going to be fine. At least it feels like for the both of you in this, it's going to work out. So if this is a family member thing, it's just a necessary part of the growing pains of evolution for the whole planet. It does put it in a much more global context, right? I mean, particularly if anybody's empathic, just the feeling of revolution and rebellion in the souls of America, but even if not, all over the world, right? Not just in America. That's the thing. It's global. Sorry. I said a truth, and a, a, an obvious truth, and see, Matt Kahn is brighter. Well, then my HD camera light. Let's keep going. Two more cards down, then I'll pop up the whole picture. This is a long reading, but I think it's worth it. Uh, and there's going to be an extended too, so nice deep breath. Whispers of Love Oracle, shall we? What are the voices of the higher selves? Now, I'm not necessarily feeling myself in this reading, to be totally honest with you. I'm not really in any relationships with anybody who's like a social justice sir right now. I'm just, I'm just a little Leo witch at home doing his work, right? But I can really relate to that companion archetype. Let's see what happens. Breathe. They have to do their jobs. Uh, here we go. <laughs> you know I'm reading Leo's in here. <laughs> Don't piss off a pride of Leo's waiting for a card to hit the table. <laughs> the higher selves of all involved, please. Thank you for the sense of humor. One card. Well, it is Leo. One card in clarity, please, for the Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign in this twin flame contract. August, September 2020. Timeless. Whenever they are supposed to see this sucker. <laughs> this contract is a tricky one. Whether they are the rebel or the companion, what is the whisper of guidance, the whisper of love, the piece of insight, inspiration, or information for them to help them heal themselves, to love themselves, to give to themselves what only they can give to themselves in this twin flame contract, August, September, or timeless 2020. Physical touch is important. Physical touch is important for some of us. Nothing is more important than a tender touch. This might include a pat on the back or giving a hug to someone who needs it. Now, in our time, that takes on a whole different connotation than it did last year, doesn't it? Because I'll go with that. Like I'll, I'll say that absolutely. I am an earth sign. Touch me. Uh, with permission, obviously. <laughs> you do not want to. Do not want to Leo anything, let alone Leo rising Mars conjunct. <laughs> fire claws. No, 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 no. Uh, blasting fire out of my mouth. Fire roar. <laughs> Physical touch is important in this context, though, might very, very well be to, to really let the person know, like, I am here for you, but I cannot go there with you right there's a physical boundary thing here look it, it, can this absolutely be a romantic sexual thing uh, like i said it would be very much a twin flame 
romantically sexually if there was somebody who was such the dominant force in the relationship and in this case the divine feminine being the dominant energy in terms of that rubble where the companion at least runs the risk of what uh, uh, well loss of personal identity the other part of that is misusing personal confidences which to me is a freaking nightmare that's why I took vows of confidentiality to my gods and my clients and you know, and, and uh, so that's like not my favorite thing in the world, but I have the companion archetype. Second wheel, uh, Kairos, not Kronos, comes and goes. Um, but nonetheless, I, I can feel for both sides of this, but there's no way they're going to be able to change each other. But physical touch is somehow important in this. I just wonder what kind of physical touch, and that's something that we are going to look at in the extended. <laughs> it's not going to be the first card down, but I won't forget that. <clears throat> Let's get you a healing mantra. Shall we? Because for some of you, if you are looking at the romantic sexual here, I can see it. I can see it. Look, some of some of my hottest, most passionate, amazing sexual relationships were twin flame. I mean, they were torturous. They were tumultuous. They were dramatic. They were over dramatic, and they were toxic. Like toxic is another one of those T's because they teach you how to heal your part of it, and you cannot help the other person heal. That is a soulmate. I like the new the new definition. Don't sue me. You realize nothing worth suing here. Let's get you a healing mantra, though. Uh, the Ascended Masters, the voices of Through the Mat Con deck, no matter who you are in this, the Rebel or the Companion, breathe. All right. Let's talk to the experts here. The Ascended Masters of Twin Flame Contract Law. Please, like a special wing of the Akashic Records library staff uh, on alert, ready for this one, please, for this Leo Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign Twin Flame contract, uh, August, September 2020, or timeless for this rebel archetype and this companion archetype. Please, what is the perfect healing mantra for them each individually and collectively, August, September 2020, timeless? healing heartbreak my heart will love again there you have it I'm just going to read it I, that's why I like this deck it do come out and say it my heart will love again believe me I know that mantra I do I do I do I do I do because our your hearts will love again. Healing heartbreak, my heart will love again. When heartbreak is healed, you are able to learn and grow from each relationship, no matter who you believe is to blame, including yourself, right? I know, it's rare for a Leo, but maybe you're not the Leo in this one. Maybe you're the cross watcher. Uh, as heartbreak is seen as life's way of breaking your heart open to expand the love you are able to give and receive, it becomes easier to pick up the pieces of your innocence and invite greater intimacy into your life. And can I just tell you that is absolutely true, but it is an alchemy that is, really, it's not that your heart gets broken, it's powdered, right? It's like you can't glue powder back together. Pieces, you might be able to pick up pieces. Powder, you need a dustpan, right? You need... <laughs> a chakra Dyson, right? But when your heart gets touched by true love, love really at all, your heart opens into this constellation, this spiral galaxy of true love, the core of who you are. It's worth it. I mean, it sucks while you're going through it. It's devastating and, and desolating and, and destructive, and but... Heartbreak is what heartbreak is. And by the way, i got to say, I'm rhyming, it's them. This feels very parent-child. Even if it's not parent-child, it's past life parent-child, then there's something going on here. But this one has got to find their own way, be the rebel that they are, but a rebel with a clue, a rebel with a cause, a rebel with a companion, at least from the background, saying, I love you, what you're doing is terrifying me, but I love you but I cannot give you what you want. I can only give you what you need on that, and that might very much be them taking their own space and power back because it's time. And if that is familial, maybe that's easier, maybe that's harder. If this is romantic sexual, maybe this is easier, maybe this is harder. But I feel like this heartbreak, this isn't the first time around with this. 
let's pop up the picture and uh, we'll see what else we see. And then we'll be bringing this over into the extended and particularly to look at for both sides, what can they really focus on to help themselves heal in this twin flame contract? But for now, take a nice deep breath. Magic clap. Because we've got a divine feminine here with the rebel archetype in the shadow, rejects legitimate authority out of anger, rebels out of peer pressure or fashion. Now, I'm really not getting that peer pressure stuff out of it, although I know that happens all the time. But if you are the rebel here, if you have by at this point identified yourself as that, then to really look, are you rejecting legitimate authority? How about a person's authority um, for their own uh, space, right? I mean, that's that's a big thing right now, but in terms of your companion here, really look at what authority do they have in this uh, relationship. Um, because to your light attribute, the challenge is authority to affect social change. Yes, absolutely challenge authority to affect social change for justice, for right doing, and even in a relationship. Uh, rejects spiritual systems that do not serve inner needs. I just feel like you're part of that larger groundswell of transformation that's happening on planet Earth right now. Um, and that is affecting this twin flame relationship uh, because what you want really, even in terms of the moon, is to still stay emotionally connected here, to still feel your way through this. But what you have right now to help you that, uh, with that is that four flames, that, that conflict, that you really don't kind of want to upset the relationships of the people that you care about in your life, particularly family, even as a rebel deep down. There is love there. Remember, you're walking with the angel of support, so you do feel supported. And if not directly by this companion archetype, I gotta say, they're, they feel trapped in this too. Like, there is definitely that Eight of Swords. So, I get, you have to kind of look for yourself right now. You have to go your own way and call it another lonely day and, and walk the path because there is such fire, such anger, such rage inside of you. I just don't necessarily think it's about purely this contract. And if it is, then your rebellion here is one of self-esteem and healing, but one that need not burn the house down necessarily. Well, particularly because what's the card of the soul there? You've got the hanged man, reversal, see this differently. I'm not saying see it from their point of view, companion, if it's completely, uh, I, 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 I tremble to say other side of the aisle. It feels like it might be so much more than that if this is parent-child, but whatever the situation is, this could even be somebody at work. I, I just don't really get the overall screaming romantic sexual here, but yet that physical touch is important there too. There's definitely a role of support and some sort of intimacy here. Um, and really, just take a step back, right? Rebel does not have to be Rebel 24-7, 365, right? Like, like a machine gun. Step back, go into that moon energy, really feel out the conflict here. Because this companion has this divine guidance and the companion archetype in the shadow, right? Betrayal uh, and misusing confidences. Now, if that went down between the two of you, I could understand the conflict of wanting to trust somebody who has betrayed your confidence. Um, but get that there's also probably a loss of personal identity. And remember, even if somebody's not a rebel, they can have a sense of personal identity there by being the one who rescues the rebel or a companion too, right? The one who bails them out, the one, you know what I mean? It's, it's, I don't, I mean, the companion, unfortunately, is also the sidekick, um, Right? You know, the, I don't know if it's the henchman. <laughs> henchman 21! Um, who's really more of a companion at the end of the day. Uh, uh, but with that Divine Guidance card, I really like that for them, because they really have to find their own way through this. It feels like without the rebel, right? And the Wheel of Fortune, like, they want their destiny. They want to follow their path. They want to uh, take what's being handed to them to take the hero's journey, but knowing that there's a matter of time here. But what they have right now to do that is to be as Aquarian friendly, very, very clean in communication, but very, very logical, not having really any of the fire that we see. Oh my god, the, the, the rebel has three fire cards, the four of flames, the five of flames, and uh, the maiden of flames, the Aries card, uh, which would be the king of flames, uh, king of wands. Uh, here we have, uh, uh, we have swords, cups, pentacles, no fire. 
really, but each of, okay, but two major arcana cards over here. So we've got the Hangman and the Moon. That makes sense for the Rebel there, kind of saying, chill out, feel things out. But for the Divine Masculine companion here, it's just that sense of the Wheel of Fortune, of really wanting to move things forward while emotionally really trying to find not just that emotional juggling of perhaps the Two of Pentacles in the water position would be, but that Six of Pentacles to really be fair and equitable. And and it just feels like, and I don't mean this in a negative way, but that this rebel uh, archetype could suck all the oxygen out of a room, right? And particularly if this is family, a lifetime of that, just trying to find some emotional balance and what's fair within themselves here is is really what they're establishing. But as a result of a Five of Cups, it's like because of the emotional upset, it's sort of the soul saying from the point of view of the soul, it's like, yeah, but with it is that Five of Cups that it just keeps spilling the cups over and over and over. And for you really to find a way within yourself, healing of yourself, giving yourself that stability and that love that really no one else can. It's just this particular contract points that out. Um, because both sides need to be heard here, right? Here, the yellow tiger mother. I think that's the point, that there is a legitimate authority here on both sides that the rebel kind of needs to kind of say, well, how about we just roar? <laughs> we'll flip a coin, right? Whoever goes first, just roar. And I'm going to respect and listen to you and understand that there are aspects of that there's heartbreak here. Like, this might be an ongoing relationship where this heart has been broken. Here is an opportunity for each of you to heal it individually because you can't help each other heal this. And that's just how twin flame contracts are. And right, even that blue earth angel to please Archangel Michael is saying, please keep this in context of what's going on on planet earth right now. The massive tumult and transformations like the whole world is going through a twin flame moment right now. But yet physical touch is important, right? There's something about here about each of you, at least if you cannot give yourself the usual physical support that you could, maybe separated by distance or ethics or that aisle division, right? The other side of the aisle to make sure then that you really get yourself the physical touch that you need somehow to ground you, to calm you, particularly for the rebel archetype, somebody there to just give them that what? Support. For it. So what would the angel of support do? Not just support you from spirit. They would get you the support that you need. And what would the angel of divine guidance do for you, companion? Not just guide you, but get you. Uh, the, the synchronicities, that which you need to guide you even deeper into the divine guidance with the healing mantra here of healing heartbreak. My heart will love again, and you probably will love each other again, but probably from a different place, particularly if it's family, but that get that you are teaching each other how to love yourselves, teaching each other how to heal yourselves individually, that it takes so many twin flames to, to really crack us open to the point where our spiritual evolution and our becoming more integrating the soul as we integrate the ego and the personality into the soul. We become the mate of the soul and therefore a better soul mate. Very alchemical. Well, they all are. They all are. Twin flame contracts are exactly that because alchemy uh, uh, takes heat, pressure, and time, right? It's how you get coal into diamond, right? Pick your metaphor. So that's what I see for you, uh, uh, my my Leo collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, twin flame contract. Whether you are the rebel or the companion, may you be blessed with all that you need to heal, to grow, to learn, to become the best that you can be, to roar uh, like the yellow tiger mother, but in the larger context of the transformation here, understanding that physical touch is important and that your heart will love again. And, and you need to speak from that and to heal and to learn and to grow and to share and to play your role in this contract. Heal it within yourself for the well-being and for the well-being of all. So mote it be. And so it is. A tricky, sticky twin flame contract, but ain't they all really at the end of the day? Please do like, subscribe, uh, go check out. We're definitely going deeper. Like, I'm in on this one. I want to look and see what happens uh, in, uh, in the extended. We're going to clarify quite a bit here. So otherwise, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Please do like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Otherwise, wishing you the very best and the very blessed of it all. Here comes the preview next. Hail, <laughs> farewell, and blessed, blessed be. Hey, my Leo 
collective sun, moon, rising, Venus signs. Thanks for coming to the extended. Uh, you got some courage. This is a rough twin flame uh, reading. No question here. So let's get down to it. Really, I only took like a 30 second break to move the decks out of the way to use the clarifiers. We're going to do a little cross decking. And what I mean by that, for the daughters of the moon that we've got for the divine feminine rebel here, we are going to take uh, past, present, future with the mythic tarot from the point of view of the gods. Sort of balance the yin and yang over there. Twin flames are about you kind of learning your own balance, right? And we will do the same for the divine masculine companion archetype with the daughters of the moon, past, present, future. Then I will take the Chuck Spazano love pack and clarify past, present, future for both sides. Uh, as well as uh, a couple of other things I want to clarify here. Like, for instance, that card of the moon and the the the, for for the divine uh, feminine rebel and that hangman, just the major arcana energy there. Clarify some things over here for the companion, particularly that eight of swords. I want to look at the six of pentacles. We'll just see how that goes. Not to mention that blue earth angel thing. I want to see what that's all about. Physical touch is important. Really, I could clarify every card in the deck. So, um, in the spread. So let's do this. Take a nice deep breath. Oh, wrong deck. <laughs> Let's get you uh, the past, present, future for this Rebel Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Ah, uh, but maybe not. I hear you. <laughs> I'm excited. The energy's high on this. Breathe. Uh, my gods, please. One card in clarity. One for the past. Where has this Rebel been in this? Leo Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign, Twin Flame Contract for August, September 2020, or Timeless, please. Let's actually do Past, Present, Future. Where have they been in this contract? One card. Where are they now in this contract? Let's do that one. And where are they headed in this contract, this rebel, in this uh, Leo Twin Flame. Let's just jump real quick and do the same here for the Divine Masculine Companion. My goddesses, please. Just three cards. Past, present, future. I'll pull them one at a time. Where has this Divine Masculine Companion been in this Twin Flame contract? Where are they now? in this Twin Flame contract. Nice and easy. Felt that one. And where are they headed most likely in this Twin? Nope. <laughs> no, no, no. So I see there is an almost but a close but no cigar moment there. Where are they headed in this Twin Flame contract? August. Uh, September 2020, you're timeless. Where are they going? Where have they been? Sorry, <laughs> that's a lot of energy. Interesting. We've got the Nine of Pentacles for uh, the Rebel here. So coming from a place of sort of going it on their own, right? Having everything that they need. They come from a place more of the Nine of Pentacles that they have uh, the support. Uh, really, there is that card of support, but perhaps, perhaps even uh, financially, or at least that's where they have been in this. And definitely it would make sense for the companion here, the Three of Wands, loyalty, often about waiting, uh, holding your candle, waiting for someone to come home, waiting for uh, uh, the next thing to happen in the relationship as a companion archetype would do. So with a rebel and a companion, we're already off to the races here. Where are they now? in this Twin Flame contract.